one of those classic riffs of grunge right there. Um, and a very cool riff, and it introduces a lot of great beginning chords and techniques, I think, that's um, not only important for rock and roll guitar, but also, too, for exploring um, your own creativity and designing your own music uh, pretty early on in your playing. And that really is centered around the power chord. Um, it's one of the best early chords to learn. Uh, it's comprised mostly of three notes, can just be two notes. And if you can see the position my hand's forming, uh, essentially it's on your, on your fretboard, a lot of people think of it as one, three, three. And that has to do with the frets that you're on or the position that you're on. One being where your index finger goes. So in the case of this song, it starts with an F power chord. So it's going to be your index finger on the first fret. And that's your F. And that's sort of your root note of the chord. Uh, and then your index finger, uh, or excuse me, your ring finger, is going to be on the third fret of the following string, your A string. So you're going to go in the third fret there. And that, though, I think of it as the fifth note. Because um, think of it like a chord. Chords are comprised of notes uh, on a scale. So like if this was a major scale in F, it would be... And so the three notes it comprises of is the F, and then you go up five notes. And there's your C, so... And then the last note is going to be the octave higher note of that F note. So in the or seven, if you're thinking in the scale, but it's going to be your uh, pinky finger on next string up on the third fret. So on the D string, third fret, there's another F. So all together. And so this is like a lot of uh, chords on the guitar. It's like once you learn it, you can play many different chord notes or chords by just sliding that position around. It's one of the cool things that makes guitar unique. Um, so by just learning that one chord, you can slide it up, and now it's an, an A power chord. Or you want to slide it up another couple. Now it's a B. Now it's a C. Uh, so just by learning that and having experimentation, I mean, you can play all sorts of stuff now. And then you can even take it up a set of strings. Uh, you can go based on the A string. Go B flat, C, D, E. Uh, even if you can keep that sort of position, you can go open. So just have the string open. And again, just come up two frets. And you can either hold them flat with your index finger here. Make a... Or some people do kind of use... There are two middle fingers. Put one on the second fret of your D string and the other one on the second fret of your G string. And then just play those three notes. And again, just, it's, you can have fun moving it around, coming up with your own songs. It's a lot of the fun of playing guitar is the ability to just experiment with it. Um, but there's another little technique, too, that I like to teach beginning musicians on the guitar. And that's uh, how to mute the other strings to make playing it a lot easier. Because especially when you're playing some fast rock and roll on these power chords, and you're trying to really focus on just hitting those strings that you want to sound, you know, just those three strings. Um, it can get tedious, and there's a better technique that you can pick up along the way that all the professionals use, and that's I think it's called uh, it's called muting essentially. But what you're going to do is on this is you're going to let your finger, your index finger that's already kind of hanging over your neck, and you're just going to let it lightly touch those other strings that you're not playing. And so essentially you're muting them. So that way, if you watch my hand here, my right hand, I strum all six strings, but you're only hearing the bottom three. And so by doing that, it kind of gives you the ability to really just kind of go wild and just strum like crazy, you know? So yeah, 
especially in my early days, I loved having fun with that. And uh, especially once you know that power chord, you can figure out a lot of rock songs too by just kind of sliding around and figuring and playing by ear along with the tape and see where, wow, that shows my age, right? By saying tape, but playing wrong with the song and just kind of figuring out, you know, like which ones it is. Um, so now that we've got that kind of technique down, we can look at Smells Like Teen Spirit. So the first power chord there is going to be that F power chord. It was the one I showed you at first, when it starts on that first fret on the E string. And you're just going to play three notes on it, the rhythm being da da da. Then you're going to go to a B flat power chord, and it's really just the next string up, keeping the same position. First fret, string up, third fret, string up, third fret. You can hit that twice. So, real slow. And then the third uh, chord, you're going to slide up three frets. And it's basically just the same pattern all over again. You've got your power chord, uh, fourth fret of the E string, index finger. Move up two frets and up one string for your ring finger. And then your pinky finger, just one string higher on that same sixth fret. And same rhythm. Then move up a string. So index finger, fourth fret, A string. Ring finger, sixth fret on your D string. And then pinky finger just above it on that G string. And you just two notes on there. So again, for that second half of the riff. And again, the importance of that technique of letting that, that index finger kind of just kind of hang just, just so lightly over the other strings your top three strings, keep them muted, so that way they're not coming through. So all together, you've got... We've pretty much got the riff, don't we? But it sounds a little off. There's something missing. And it's that special touch that Kurt gave this riff. Uh, one of the kind of mature ideologies I once heard about music was that it's not so much about how many notes you play, but what you do with that space in between the notes. And Kurt really showed his musical maturity with how he treated playing the guitar, uh, especially in his rhythm playing. And he throws in this real percussive sort of accent on the muted notes in between the chords. Just a simple in between them. So like. And it makes for a pretty cool sound, especially when you kick into distortion. That second half, I love like that position almost kind of causes these kind of harmonic uh, uh, pops on it, so you can be like, <laughs> always dug that sound. So, so all together, one more time. So you're almost kind of just keeping a steady rhythm with your with your right hand. Um, not totally consistently, as you can see, there's, there's a little bit, you know, it's kind of like a dun, 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 uh, but once you can kind of master those little fills, then you really be able to mimic that riff correctly. And it's such an iconic riff. So one more time all together. Well, 
And that's it. There's the opening riff to Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit. And again, too, this opens the door for you to explore the guitar and come up with your own riffs uh, similar to this or your own rock and roll tunes. Beautiful thing is just slide that position around, come up with your own combinations, see what you can come with, and then most importantly, have fun. So again, my name is Chris Bargeron. Thank you for joining me for this lesson. Uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, you can check out some of my content in the links in the description. Uh, one special thing I'm doing right now is I'm giving a free 15-minute online lesson. Uh, if you want to just click the link, uh, it'll send you to my email. We can work about scheduling something and see if you enjoy uh, my style. And if you'd like to move forward with it, uh, we can discuss that. So again, it's been Chris Bargeron. Uh, have fun rocking and enjoying the guitar. Take care.